Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. After taking a break during the disappointing 3.19 Calandra expansion, Zizarin's Gauntlet is back, and it's going to be starting a few hours after this video goes live. I wanted to put together a couple of tips for those of you that might be playing in your first Gauntlet, or that are competing against your own personal best in previous Gauntlets. So firstly, what is Gauntlet? It's Path of Exile on Extreme Hard Mode. Monsters are faster and more deadly than normal, and the magnitude of the buffs that they get scales up the further that you progress through the game. Additionally, the hardcore rule set is in play, the solo self-found rule set is in play. So this is definitely no joke. Monsters are going to be much more dangerous than in the normal game, and in particular, a number of abilities that you might be able to just endure in the base game are going to kill you in Gauntlet if they connect with you. So those abilities are things you're going to have to dodge. There are significant cash prizes available for people who can clear all of the uber bosses and be one of the first two people to do so on any particular class. Although it is worth reminding people that these are definitely only going to be won by people who have spent the last week practicing and who are already among the game's elite. The main appeal for many people though is the more accessible competition that's taking place on the side of that. There are minor prizes that are available for hitting level 90 or for other milestones or also just competing against your own personal best or competing for fun. Now if you're new to Gauntlet, there's a few things that are much more dangerous in Gauntlet than they are in the core game. Those are going to be what I want to focus on in this video. A lot of the earlier Gauntlets had absolutely brutal Acts 1 and 2. This is no longer really the case. You definitely can die in Act 1 and Act 2, and Brutus is nasty, the ledge zone can be quite nasty, and in particular the Weaver in Act 2 can be very nasty. But these are nowhere near as bad as they were in some previous editions of the Gauntlet. In Act 1, you want to be very careful of Brutus. In Act 2, you still want to be careful of the Weaver. In Act 3, I don't think there's anything truly terrifying. In Act 4, you want to be terrified of Doedre and also Chevron. And in Act 5, it's Innocence and it's Katava. But the real danger comes a bit later. In the back half of the axe, monster mods get nastier. 25% increased damage, 15% increased action speed, plus one projectile still, and 10% increased AOE. This makes a couple of fights particularly deadly, and the one I really want to call out is pretty much the whole back half of Act 9. Act 9 contains one trash mob and several bosses that really scale in terrifying ways with these mods. The trash mob is Stygian Revenants. Stygian Revenants are found in the Blood Aqueduct and also in the Belly of the Beast. You want to be very afraid of those monsters. But when it comes to bosses, the real dangers are Chevron, Doedre, and the Depraved Trinity. Chevron in particular can be very dangerous because she's someone that you are not used to taking seriously. In the base game, for experienced players, Chevron is a very easy fight. In Gauntlet, she definitely is not, and you really want to be careful. She's going to fire additional projectiles, which is going to make her projectile barrage much more unpredictable than it is in the base game. She's also going to have increased AoE, which means you need to sidestep things by a bit more than you used to, and of course being faster makes her more dangerous. And because she does so much lightning damage, 25% increased damage means that you will suffer larger shocks than you otherwise would. In short, Chevron is truly terrifying. Doedre is also very nasty and very easy to underestimate. I'll show some footage of the Doedre fight and in particular point out the various things that the debuffs that she inflicts on you does, but the key thing you need to be aware of is that she will go into a shrieking mode. You never want to not have a portal that you can escape through during this fight. If Doedre starts her shriek, you want to run to your portal as quickly as possible, use your move skill, use everything you can to get into that portal ASAP. Otherwise, you can easily die to that Shriek. Especially because it is possible to very easily accidentally kill the pillar you are hiding behind. Finally, you have the Depraved Trinity. Depraved Trinity has a number of abilities that scale nastily with these mods. But on top of all of that, Depraved Trinity also has something else that you probably underestimate because it is not very dangerous in the base game, and that is the Scorpion Phases. When the Depraved Trinity is brought below two-thirds life for the first time, and again when it falls below one-third life for the first time, it will start a Scorpion Phase unless it is killed by burst damage before this phase starts. When this happens, it will disappear from the arena for a bit, and it will spawn six Scorpions that are heavy hitters that move pretty fast. These are much, much, much more dangerous than you're expecting, and they can really rip you apart, especially if one of them is able to leverage its increased movement speed and increased damage in order to land a stun on you. If you get stunned by one of these, it is lights out, but even if you're not stunned, it's still pretty dangerous. What I suggest you do to counter this is to level a decoy totem, at least from the time that you get to Act 6, pick up a decoy totem and just start leveling it. 
When you get to Act 9, it'll be a reasonably high level decoy totem, and you'll be able to plop it down in this fight when the Depraved Trinity hits about 70% or 68% or so. And then when the Scorpions are spawned, you can just use this to get yourself a very quick breather, but if you do make a bit of a mistake and one of them is able to get over to you and stun you, you've got much more of a chance if the other five are distracted by a decoy totem. And also, while they're distracted by a decoy totem, you can easily enough kill them. So that's what I would suggest for Depraved Trinity. Other bosses that you want to be really terrified of. Act 10, Valenta. This is a fight you probably want to come back to much later in the game. But it's also not a boss you have to kill before you can take on Katava. The next one you want to be very careful of is Avarius Reassembled. Now this fight is very mechanically easy, but don't let that fool you, just the damage output on this guy is enormous. So this is in the chambers where you would fight Innocence in Act 5. In Act 10 you'll fight Avarius Reassembled there instead, and some of his abilities do a lot of damage. Most notably his Frontal AoE Cone Cleave Attack. This hits a larger area than you're expecting, and it can one-shot players very, very, very easily. So watch out for that. It is much more dangerous than you think it is. Finally, Katava's as dangerous as you'd expect. Finally, there are two things at monster level 68 that are really, really terrifying. You'll notice that there's two additional projectiles fired by monsters that are level 68 plus. You know what is an area level 68? The Merciless Labyrinth. Merciless Azaro is terrifying when he's firing two additional projectiles. The reason that plus two projectiles is such a dangerous mod on Azaro is that it also applies to the Goddess of Justice, the green thing on Azaro's back, and when she fires her projectiles at you, those projectiles, after they impact the ground, they rise as skeletons. Now, instead of the Goddess of Justice firing one projectile, waiting a couple of frames, firing another projectile, waiting a couple of frames, firing one projectile, waiting another couple of frames, each of those instances of firing a projectile is replaced by firing three projectiles. So there are three times as many skeletons that spawn. These skeletons aren't particularly dangerous themselves. The key thing is that they can body block you into a situation where you're checkmated by Azaro's traps and Azaro's own attacks. This can be very, very dangerous. If you're in a situation where your character can just obliterate those skeletons as soon as they spawn, you are definitely killing them with non-critical strikes from your main attack and your main attack is hitting a large area of the screen, then in that situation you don't need to worry. But generally speaking, when you just get to the Merciless Labyrinth for the first time, you're probably not in that position, and so you should really, really fear the Merciless Labyrinth for that reason. Finally, also in Monster Level 68 zones is Lava Lake, the Tier 1 map that is far more dangerous than it has any right to be. The stats of the actual Katava monster are much lower than the stats of the Katava monster in Act 10, but don't let that fool you, this is a wrecking ball encounter. The reason for that is that the trash mobs that are spawned will be far more dangerous than the ones that you fight in the Act 10 version of Katava, and many of them will be Katava's Heralds. They fire projectiles with an AoE ability on them. As a result, these monsters are going to be firing three projectiles instead of one, they're going to have increased AoE, they're going to have increased attack, cast, and move speed, and they're going to have massively increased damage. In short, these things are going to be wrecking balls. I would suggest that you hold off on doing the Lava Lake map until you feel comfortable doing tier 8, tier 9 maps, and then at that point come back and just use your overwhelming power in order to get it down fast. Otherwise, this is going to be one of the more deadly encounters that you will fight in low tier maps, and it's something that you want to put off at all costs. Otherwise, you might find yourself back on the Twilight Strand. One last tip, if you want to get a little bit of practice with any of these bosses, what I would suggest you do is take one of your high level characters in either Standard or in the Sanctum League and remove your boots and remove any other extreme sources of movement speed that your character has. So if you're lucky enough to own a Mage Blood, remove that. And then go and do these fights again, but do them with a different mindset. Don't try to kill the boss. Instead, try to just stay in the arena for two full minutes without being hit. That is useful practice that will serve you well when the gauntlet comes around and you're trying to repeat the same feat under much more pressure. That's all I've got for now. May your Valorbs have interesting results and may you get the gauntlet results that you deserve.